What's up guys, my name is Dave and this is Michael. What's up guys, welcome to I.O. where we overload you with information. And information overload! Whoa. So, did you watch the Oscars last night? I was watching them and I quite enjoyed myself. Did you? Mm -hmm. What was probably the best thing about the Oscars? It had to go with Seth MacFarlane, I'm a huge fan of the boob song. I'm a boob man, how about you? It was funny, I thought it was ingenious and I think it shattered some people's dimensions of their, you know, their future acting career, there, but yeah. There was a few people in the audience kind of going, mm -hmm. nah, nah, nah. yeah. But, but it's true. Charlie's there. And Naomi yes. Watts, these oh. girls were going, why is he bringing this up? Oh yeah, I know. It was but they shouldn't have flashed the cash if they don't want it made public, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. If, they're, they, if they want to be like dedicated actors to their craft, they shouldn't go, well, flash time, you know, mm -hmm. that's the way I think about it. Oh, there was one person, it was Jennifer Lawrence. She actually, you know, she was doing some fist bumps because oh. no one's actually seen the and we all, I think, kind of wanted to see that. We were, we're kind of, all hoping for Well, when she went to accept her award and tripped and fell, I was thinking, this is it! This yes! is the time! Yes! Yes! No. And see it. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, you know what? Besides that, let's talk about uh, best, uh, well, best actor. What do you think? Oh, my goodness. Well, of course, it went to a man who's already got two Oscars at home. Daniel Day-Lewis. Daniel Day-Lewis. The big guy, right? The Daniel Day-Lulu. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think, you know what? He definitely deserved that this year because, I mean, you rock a beard, I rock a beard, and you're playing Lincoln of all guys, the guy in the tall hat. And to me, to be perfectly honest, you know, if you're 40 days on set, 50, 60 days on now, these things itch after a while, so I'm giving him definitely best actor because of that reason. If they're giving out awards for dodging razors, he definitely deserves one. Oh yeah, uh, but go, well, you were gonna say something. I don't know. I don't know. I think Denzel Washington. You know, a bit of that. He was getting the shakes just looking at. Oh. For me, that's not acting, that's real life, but he demonstrated a really good job. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I would have went with Denzel, but Daniel Day, take another Oscar. Best picture. Best picture was Argo! Argo! Do you agree or I never saw oh. Life of Pi. Oh, Argo like, was good. If, if Argo, if I could put it into an emotion, it would be like this. Argo! It was just totally amazing. And there's also some throwbacks there to our Canadians. You know, the film, they, they borrowed a Canadian identity. There was a few shots of passports. Yeah. And you know, the film industry here, we'll take anything we can get. I mean, I, let's say Argo was a good film, but to be perfectly honest, I still think Skyfall definitely. I'm one of those Skyfall guys. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but James Bond, I like to see big explosions. I like to see big cars, awesome cars, and ladies. You know well, what, what you got was Big Adele, and she won the award for best. She won the best, best for best soundtrack. Best and so I'm going to film. I, I mean, we totally saw that coming because there was like so much media towards it. One more thing, did you, anyone notice Kristen Stewart? She was sitting at the Oscars alone. I think right next to her no was way. like John Travolta. What? Looks a little awkward. She looked a little uncomfortable, John but isn't that Kristen Stewart? John Travolta, man, some serious Botox, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that was definitely like, uh, you know, I was like, I don't, I didn't think guys Botox, but clearly he does. Well, he's living the movies, face off. <laughs> 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 To an extreme. But that's the Oscars, and it was a good time by all. Jennifer Lawrence seems to be clumsier than me these days. Hi everyone, I'm Sandra Matos, and we're covering the 86th Annual Academy Awards here on IO. Jennifer Lawrence looks stunning in her long red dress, but I'm sure she got a little red in the cheeks too when she found herself fumbling on someone else's dress. Now she also tripped last year when she made her way onto the stage, so Ellen had a little bit of fun with her this year, saying that how maybe if she wins an Oscar, that they should come and bring down the Oscar to her. Ellen's joking seemed to catch Jennifer off guard a little bit. I think she was hoping that no one saw her trip. This year, the stumble didn't happen in the Oscars, but it did as she arrived to the Oscars. It happened just as she stepped out of the car. Oops, Jennifer, watch your step. So one of the biggest moments of the night that has people up in arms is when Luke Perry and Cameron Boyce were left out of the 2020 Oscars in memoriam segment. This was even more shocking because Luke Perry, best known at the time of his death for his character on Riverdale, was actually featured and one of the nominees for Best Picture, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He played Wayne Maunder in the film, and although it was a smaller role, Perry did still share a scene with the movie's lead, Leonardo DiCaprio, and was even listed on the SAG nomination for Best Ensemble. So here I really can't understand why he was left out. One of the executive producers of the show, Bruce Davis, did an interview with the Washington Post back in 2001 that can help shed a little light on the decision. He said, quote, If a person's career has been primarily in television or live theater, we say we're gonna let that person go and assume that the Tony people or the Emmy people will pick that up. 
So essentially he's saying that the Oscars is reserved for cast and crew more intertwined in the film industry, and both of these men are better well known for their television than film careers. Especially for boys, since the former Disney Channel star had a very successful career in television spanning more than 10 years, but only appeared in about 5 films, with 6 on its way currently in post production called Runt. But this doesn't explain Perry's omission, as of course he was very well known for his roles on 90210 and Riverdale. He also starred in a whopping 36 movies, including Once Upon a Time in Hollywood that I mentioned earlier. The situation was made even worse when fans noticed that Boyce and Perry were also left out of the Oscars online list, which is longer than the list that's put on air for time constraints. At the current time, nobody from the Oscars has come out and made a statement about it, but considering all the backlash the decision has garnered on social media, I would assume the Academy would do something within the next few days to address the situation. But to lighten things up a little bit, I wanted to fill you in on some of the other standout moments at last night's Oscars. One thing that's been blowing up online is Billie Eilish's reaction to Kristen Wiig and Maya Rudolph's breaking out into song during their comedy bit. To be honest, I thought the ladies sounded pretty damn good, but I was shocked when Billie looked very unimpressed. However, tons of fans online are defending her by saying that she was most likely just responding to the fact that she was being shown on camera during the performance. In more of a question type way like, why are they showing me right now, kind of thing. And of course, Twitter memed the heck out of this like they always do. This one's my favorite though, <laughs> me remembering tomorrow is Monday. That was me 100% yesterday. Another thing that was just a cute heartwarming moment was when Timothy Shamley photobombed Margot Robbie and they got this adorable shot together. Oh my god, I love them so much. <laughs> and if you were excited to see Eminem finally perform Lose Yourself after the song won in 2003 for best original song for the movie 8 Mile, Martin Scorsese did not feel the same way as they showed him literally sleeping during the performance. Guess I'm not the only person who thought this show was kind of boring. Also, Natalie Portman showed up again as the feminist icon that she is by wearing a cape over her dress with all the names of female directors that were snubbed on it this year, as not one single woman was nominated. I freaking hate that, but love that for her. I love how she does stuff like that all the time. Then Julia Butters was already the cutest person on the carpet, but got even more adorable when she showed everyone that she brought her own sandwich to the show, as she said she doesn't like the food. <laughs> Honestly, like we just don't deserve her. She is so adorable. And her performance in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, like, she's just so amazing. She's like better than I will ever be, literally. <laughs> And lastly, Parasite won the coveted Best Picture Spot and Best Director Award. And the whole cast, even the interpreter, won over everyone's hearts with how wholesome and proud they all were. And they deserve to be, as the film is the first non-English film to ever win Best Picture. And the crowd showed their love when, in an attempt to cut their speech short, the Academy put down the stage lights and started to shine it on Jane Fonda. But Tom Hanks and Charlize Theron fought back by cheering up, up, up to signal they wanted to hear the rest. And because of them, the Academy let them finish, which is on, just so cute. We always love people helping each other and lifting them up. And as you might have heard, the show did not have a host, which a lot of people blame for the fact that the show felt unhinged at times, but then painfully boring at others. I hope after this year they get a host for the next one. My vote's for Ricky Gervais. He just killed it at the Golden Globes. After Remy Malek won his first Oscar for Best Actor in a Leading Role, he fell off the stage and landed flat on his face. <laughs> If that's not the most relatable thing I've ever heard, I don't know what is. Welcome back to Inform Overload, the channel that tells you about the most interesting viral news stories we find on the internet. I'm Charlotte Dobre, hit that subscribe for daily news updates that will make you stop what you're doing and follow us on Instagram. So before I get into this video, tell me down there in the comments, did you watch the Oscars? What was your favorite moment? I was blown away by Lady Gaga's and Bradley Cooper's performance. Does anyone else ship that? Cause I know that they're both in relationships, but I low key want them to end up together. Tell me your favorite Oscar moment down there in those comments. 37 year old Rami Malek won best actor for his role as Freddie Mercury in Bohemian Rhapsody. Definitely deserved. He literally was Freddie Mercury. Malek was overcome with emotion and delivered an amazing, inspiring acceptance speech. But most people didn't know that after his win, Rami Malek fell off the stage, landed on his face, and had to be treated by paramedics. Oscar producers quickly cut to commercial as Rami Malek was making his way back to his seat, but people in the audience were taken aback by a loud thud. 
Thankfully, the fall wasn't televised, but there were plenty of photographers who caught the moment. No one really knows what caused the fall or if Remy Malik was hurt badly. He was helped back onto his feet by several people around him and he was attended to immediately by paramedics and security while in his seat. They then took him backstage. It's a good thing that Oscar statues aren't made of glass cuz otherwise it's likely that his would have broken from the fall. I don't think Remy Malik was too bummed out about the fall though. Sure, he was a little embarrassed, but Bohemian Rhapsody raked in four awards, making it the most awarded movie of the year. It also won for best film editing, best sound editing, and best sound mixing. Oh yeah, and was anybody else's mind blown by Queen opening the ceremony? That was unreal, dude. Rami Malek also became the first best actor winner of Arab Heritage. So Rami isn't the first person to fall at the Oscars. It happened a couple times before. Jennifer Lawrence famously tripped up the stairs while accepting her Oscar back in 2012. Jennifer Garner also slipped on the stage when she was presenting an award. So it's not unheard of. That stage is slippery, what can we say? Some other Oscar highlights include Alfonso Cuaron winning Best Director for Roma, Best Actress going to Olivia Colman for The Favorite, Best Screenplay to Spike Lee for Black Klansman, and Best Picture going to Green Book. I also like low-key heard that Spike Lee was seriously salty after Black Klansman didn't win Best Picture. Like I'm talking visibly upset and he actually tried to leave the ceremony after Green Book won. He was stopped at the doors and forced to return to his seat after the speeches ended. When speaking to Vanity Fair report, about Green Book winning Best Picture at the Oscars after party, he said, Are you British? Let me give you a British answer. It wasn't my cup of tea. The Academy Awards saw its biggest screw up in its history as the wrong winner for Best Picture was announced. I'm Rebecca Felgate, thank you for joining me here on Inform Overload, where we are bringing you all of the latest Oscars news. In a moment as awkward as Steve Harvey's Miss Universe wrong announcement in 2015, actress Faye Dunaway and actor Warren Beatty were presenting the award for best picture when they were allegedly passed the wrong envelope. The winner of the hotly anticipated award was read out loud to a captive audience at the 89th Academy Awards held at the Dolby Theatre in Los Angeles as well as in front of millions of people watching live worldwide. Only the wrong movie was announced. Uh oh. Warren Beatty did look quite uncomfortable and confused when he opened the envelope, which he then passed on to Dunaway to read out loud. Dunaway then said the sentence, and the winner of the Academy Award for Best Picture is. La La Land. Cue the whole cast and crew of the movie getting up on stage, picking up the award, yielding it to the sky, getting teary, smiling, thanking their friends, their families, their loved ones. That was until the Oscars producers got on the stage and started to fill in the team that actually they had not won at all and the winner was Moonlight. One of the most awkward moments was Fred Berger receiving the news mid speech. He then continued his speech but then finished it with, we lost by the way. He then announced that Moonlight should come to the stage as they were the real winners. Cue the gasps from the shocked audience members. Everyone was like, oh, no. Ryan Gosling's face after hearing the news is pretty spectacular. Emma Stone's reaction was, I fing love Moonlight. And then there were the jokes at Steve Harvey's expense. It was the epitome of Awkward, like so awkward, especially as the Moonlight team thought that they were on the receiving end of some weird and sick joke. As the correct envelope was brought to the stage, it was held up to the camera so all could see that it was indeed correct. The story seems to be that the hosts were handed the wrong envelope, instead receiving the envelope for Emma Stone's best actress award in La La Land. However, Emma Stone said backstage, I was holding my best actress card the whole time so whatever story you heard, I don't know what happened but I wanted to tell you that. It looks like those responsible for the mess up were Brian Cullinan and Maria Ruse, the partners at Price Waterhouse Coopers. These are the people who count the votes and place the winners in envelopes and then give them out to the host to read. Obviously the cast of Moonlight were absolutely delighted as they came to take their award but their celebrations were marred by the whole messy business. Hopefully La La Land's five award wins ease the pain of the awkward mess up and hopefully the Moonlight team are able to enjoy their award for best picture that they absolutely deserve. So we all know Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart is a comedian, musician, actor and producer and most recently he has been known for his hosting work. Before being announced as the host of the 91st Academy Awards in late 2018, he had spoken about wanting to present 
the awards ceremony, calling it the opportunity of a lifetime. Now that opportunity did come knocking, but it was very short lived as old tweets from Hart surfaced and they didn't paint the 39 year old funny man in a very good light at all. It seems that the performer had tweeted a slew of offensive statements between 2009 and 2011 prior to the height of his fame. Some of the tweets have now been deleted, but the good old Daily Mail has yo back. They've got screenshots. You gotta keep those receipts. One of them said, Yo, if my son comes home and tries to play with my daughter's doll's house, I'm gonna break it over his head and say in my voice, Stop, that's gay. In 2010, he was also quoted saying that one of his biggest fears is his son growing up gay. The tweets outrage many, many people, and I totally understand. A lot of people out there were rushing to call the entertainer homophobic. BuzzFeed senior film reporter Adam B. Vary did some investigation and went on a deep dive of Hart's old tweets. He wrote, I did a search for every time Kevin Hart tweeted f homo or gay. It was a lot. And he seems to have basically stopped tweeting those words after 2011, i.e., the year his first stand up movie came out. Following the re emergence of his old tweets, Hart decided to step down from the Oscars. He tweeted out saying, I have made the choice to step down from hosting this year's Oscars. This is because I do not want to be a distraction on a night that should be celebrated by so many amazing, talented artists. I sincerely apologize to the LGBTQ community for my insensitive words from my past. I'm sorry that I hurt people. I'm evolving and I want to continue to do so. My goal is to bring people together, not tear us apart. Much love and appreciation to the Academy. I hope we can meet again." Now Hart is currently performing on tour in Sydney and soon took to tweeting pictures of his crowd. Things haven't actually been so great for entertainment's golden boy in the past couple of years. Now the uproar comes almost exactly a year after his cheating scandal. Last year he admitted he cheated on his wife, Aniko Parrish, who he married in 2016. Their son was born in late November 2017, and it seems that he admitted to cheating on her while she was pregnant, which upset a lot of his fans, not least his wife. Honestly, if someone cheated on me while I was pregnant, I don't know how I could forgive them, so, you know, good on her for trying to get through it. The pair have stuck it out, and Hart called cheating on her the dumbest moment of his life. I guess now he has a few instances to choose from. From Hart's tweets, it seems like he is still hopeful that he will be able to host the Oscars in the future, but who knows what kind of lasting impact the second scandal will have on his career. So this begs the question, who will host the Oscars in 2019? We haven't had a female host in 5 years since Ellen in 2014, and since 2008 only 2 women have had the opportunity, so I don't know. I hope it goes to the best person for the job, but I hope that more females are considered. You know what? Hosting the Oscars is an absolute dream for me. I think winning an Oscar would be a dream for Charlotte, so maybe we can make that happen in the future. I'll present it to her. I'm gonna manifest this as an option. I'm feeling like 2021 or 2022. Please and thank you, universe. After the biggest Academy Awards mistake in history, everyone is wondering who is to blame. Was it on purpose? Was it a mistake? And how are those people going to be punished? How horrible would it be to think that you were getting an Oscar for Best Picture and you're giving your acceptance speech and then all of a sudden your Oscar gets taken away from you because someone wasn't doing their job. Not to mention, it took way too long for them to realize that the wrong name was red. I'm going to tell you exactly what happened and what's going to happen to the people who did it right now on IO. Hey there friends, welcome back to Inform Overload. My name is Charlotte Dobre and I'm pretty upset La La Land didn't win Best Picture. What's more is I can't even imagine how heartbreaking and frankly embarrassing that Oscar mix up was for them. So during the Oscars, Warren Beatty and Faye Dunham Away, we're announcing the winner for Best Picture. When they read the wrong name, it took several minutes for someone to rush on stage and fix the problem. Warren Beatty said that the envelope he received was the wrong envelope and was actually the card for Emma Stone's Best Actress win. Things got a little more sketchy later on at night when Emma Stone told reporters that she had the envelope the whole time. So does that mean that this mix up was not a mix up at all? Was it done on purpose? For like publicity or for better ratings? So according to the Academy's president Cheryl Boone Isaacs, the two accountants who handled the winner's envelopes during Sunday night's show were Brian Cullinan and Martha Ruiz. She said, they have one job to do, one job to do. Obviously there was a distraction. Cheryl said they will never work an Oscars night again. And how did that mix up happen? In a statement released by PwC, which was the accounting firm that employed these two 
people. They said that Brian Cullinan mistakenly handed the backup envelope for actress in a leading role instead of the envelope for best picture to the presenters. Once the error occurred, protocols for correcting it were not followed through on quickly enough by Mr. Cullinan or his partner. No kidding. The award for best picture is the most important award of the whole night. What the heck were you doing backstage? And don't you like look in the envelope to make sure you're giving the right one? Seriously guys, this was all kind of face palms, but it will be remembered as one of the most infamous Academy Awards ever for this reason. Trump jabs Pep at the 89th Academy Awards as host Jimmy Kimmel tweeted the President of the United States to say that Meryl says hi. I'm Rebecca Felgate, continuing to bring you the Oscars news right here on Inform Overload. To say that Donald Trump has caused a stir in Hollywood recently may be a slight understatement. The controversial 45th President of the United States famously lashed out at decorated actress Meryl Streep to call her one of the most overrated actresses of all time. The three time Academy Award winning Streep was indeed in the audience during last night's awards and host Jimmy Kimmel took the time to let the president know exactly whose side he was on. Kimmel got Meryl to stand up and jokingly asked the audience to give her a totally undeserved round of applause, to which the audience did. Everyone stood and clapped for her, and she deserves it. Kimmel also poked fun at her dress, asking if it was an Ivanka. This jibe came after Meryl's feud with Chanel chief Karl Lagerfeld, who admitted that he had falsely accused the actress of asking for money to wear Chanel on the red carpet. During Kimmel's opening speech, the award host actually thanked President Trump, saying, Remember last year when it seemed like the Oscars were racist? After which, the cheeky host continued with, We're gonna have fun tonight. Kimmel later tweeted the president live on stage, becoming worried that after two hours into the show, the usually outspoken press hadn't tweeted at the show once. Kimmel tweeted him to say, Hey, you up? Quickly followed by hashtag Meryl says hi. These tweets earned Kimmel a personal record for his most engaged with tweets, as he received hundreds of thousands of likes and retweets. Despite Kimmel speculating that Trump would indeed tweet about the awards in all caps during his 5 a.m. bowel movement, the president has been uncharacteristically silent. This has led many to speculate that he has finally been able to place a lid on his social media outbursts. Unless, of course, he is plotting a worse revenge. I mean, look at Oleg Orovkin. Even though Kimmel made plenty of jokes, there was one very serious message in his speech. He said, There are millions and millions of people watching right now, and if every one of you took a minute to reach out to one person you disagree with and have a positive, considerate conversation, not as liberals or as conservatives, but as Americans, if we did that, it would make America great again. It starts with us. I, for one, think this applies to everyone, not just America. For the first time in many years, everyone is talking about the Oscars, but it has nothing to do with anyone winning any awards. Everyone instead is talking about Will Smith slapping Chris Rock in the face after the comedian made a joke about Jada Pinkett Smith. The 94th Academy Awards took place on Sunday and all was going swell until Will Smith took great offense to a joke about his wife. Chris was introducing the award for best documentary when he turned his attention to the Smith family who appeared to be front and center. Rock joked that he was looking forward to seeing Jada in G.I. Jane 2, which was a poorly timed joke at Jada's lack of hair. To explain the joke, G.I. Jane is a 1997 movie star a bald Demi Moore as a soldier. Little did Chris know, Jada had been diagnosed with alopecia, which is an autoimmune condition characterized by rapid hair loss in the scalp, eyebrows, and eyelashes, for which treatments are very limited. In the clip, you can see that initially Will Smith actually laughs at the joke, but then when he notices that Jada is rolling her eyes and clearly displeased, he gets up to defend his wife. Will then marches straight at Chris Rock and proceeds to slap him in the face. As Rock is stunned by this unscripted moment, he tries to explain that it was just a joke. Although Will is fired up at this point and clearly doesn't care as he shouts twice during the live broadcast, keep my wife's name out of your effing mouth. And now stunned Chris Rock must finish presenting the award for best documentary, but before continuing he says that was the greatest night in the history of television. I'm sure he meant to say that was the greatest moment in the history of television, but if you just got slapped in the face by Will Smith, you'd be a little out of sorts as well. Now a lot of people were split on the internet about this. Some people were defending Will Smith, saying that he was just defending his wife and thought that Chris's joke was perhaps in poor taste. However, on the flip side, 
side of things, the other argument is that this should have been handled all off air. Plus, words should not equal violence. All this will do is make every comedian everywhere start joking about Jada because now they know how much of a sore spot this is for Will Smith. What's bizarre is that during the American broadcast, they actually cut the audio when Will started to yell at Chris. But for people watching in Australia, the sound was still going, and so the uncensored clip started to make the rounds online. In response to what took place, the Academy tweeted, The Academy does not condone violence of any form. Tonight, we are delighted to celebrate our 94th Academy Award winners who deserve this moment of recognition from their peers and movie lovers around the world. And as it turns out, this situation is much deeper than it appears. You see, this isn't the first time that Chris Rock has made fun of the Smith family. Back in 2016, the comedian hosted the Academy Awards where both Will and Jada were in attendance. Rock made fun of Jada publicly saying that she was going to boycott the show after another year of all white acting nominees. At the time, he said, Jada said she's not coming. I was like, isn't she on a TV show? Jada's gonna boycott the Oscars? Jada boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting Rihanna's panties. I wasn't invited. He also poked fun at Will Smith, who was being considered as a possible Oscar nominee for his role in the film Concussion. Chris went on to say, Will was not nominated for Concussion. I get it. You get mad? It's not fair that Will was this good and didn't get nominated. You're right. It's also not fair that Will was paid $20 million for Wild Wild West. Now afterwards, Jada was asked about the jokes that Chris told, and she seemed to take them all in stride at the time. She said back in 2016, it comes with the territory, sweetheart. Hey, look, it comes with the territory, but we gotta keep it moving. We gotta keep it moving. We gotta keep it moving. There's a lot of stuff we gotta handle, a lot of stuff in our world right now. We gotta keep it moving. This time around though, she was not as willing to absorb these jokes, and that was made clear by Will Smith being sent to the stage to slap Chris for what he said. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this though, because that's all the time we have for today. So stay classy, and I'll see you on the next one.